What's up guys, Toogie here, back again. And after the extremely, extremely stressful last episode, we move on. We will take a few moments to celebrate the fact that both teams are champions before we move on to the draft. Unbelievable. I hated the end I hated to end the last episode the way that I did, but I mean that episode was already like 26 minutes or whatever the hell. It ended up being, I don't know, I just edit them and put them on the internet, I don't know what to tell you. I cannot believe we won that. And the fact that it was Peter Solaric who did it. Like I said, I've never been so happy to see Brad Marsh and Linus Arneson injured. Matt Grizzlick finished with 20 points in 21 games. Aside from that, we kind of, like 14 points in 21 isn't too bad. But like, how is DeBrusque outscoring Skinner, Krejci, Bergeron... Marchand, in fairness, was a point-of-game player when he was healthy. But Peter Solarik, man, six points in nine games. Five in five for Chalowski. And an unbelievable run. While Carlo went at 21 games <laughs> without a point. Tuka Rask in the end. Tuka Rask and Alex Lyon. Unreal. Three losses between them. Three. That is absolutely crazy. And that doesn't seem right. I don't know why that doesn't seem right. Lion finished with a 944. Rask with a 933. Just unreal. Absolutely unbelievable. I still don't know what to say. I really don't. But very happy. And that's the thing that sucks. Is it's like, all right, cool, we can enjoy it, and then we have to move on. But you look at the leading scorers, man. Backlund, Brody, Kachuk, Goodrow, Bennett. And somehow, Sam Bennett was actually pretty quiet throughout this series. But somehow, we were able to overcome. And we should, just really quickly, let's give credit to the Calder Cup champions, your wannabes, led by Tara Tukin, Baron, and Forsbacher Carlson. Not too shabby at all. Let's take a look at some hardware, shall we? Because it's going to be very nice to look at. Of course, the call to cup goes to the province runs. We'll look at the AHL first. Why not? Connor Brown with the most points. He also won the MVP. Dennis Chalowski scored the most goals <laughs> as a defenseman. He was also the outstanding rookie player and the best defenseman. Tristan Jari was the goalie of the year. Vianney Vevalainen was the MVP of the playoffs. Connor Brown gets more hardware. Gertsen, Giertsen, who the hell knows. Uh, Kakonen on the Iowa Wild also took home some hardware, but a very solid year for Chalowski. And there you see it. Three seasons down, two cups. Who would have guessed that? Not me. The Art Ross Trophy went to Mark Shifley. He led the league in points. We'll have to take a look. And everything else there. The Hart Trophy goes to Alex Galchenyuk. Chris Letang, or Galchenyuk. Uh, Chris Letang won the Norris. Galchenyuk won the Lady Bing. The Calder went to Joshua Hosang. Grizzlick was the Conn Smythe winner. Carey Price won the Vesna. And the Jennings, Ole Mob, the Masterton. The Selkie went to Kopitar again. The Ted Lindsay Award went to Galchenyuk. And the Rocket Richard to Evgeny Malkin. Not too bad at all. Unbelievable. That Matt Grizzly. I can understand why with Rask and Leon splitting the time there. Wow, Shifley, Galchenyuk, Line, the only players to break 90 points. It's still 90 points. That is unbelievable. And I know it shows Line down in Manitoba. That's probably Oh, just because it's the offseason. We won the Stanley Cup. That's what I'm trying to say. We won the Stanley Cup, but now we have to move forward into an offseason where or into a into a draft even where I just I don't know what to expect. Obviously the draft pick situation's weird because of the Jeff Skinner trade, and I honestly don't have a very good memory of that because of the long postseason run. So this will be interesting. Now there you have it. Florida, Colorado, Philly, Buffalo, and Edmonton via Vancouver. Edmonton has two picks, two lottery picks. For the Oilers, retired players, we don't lose anybody. I can't imagine we lost any goalies either. We did not. Throughout the league, though, retired goalies, Henrik Lundqvist, Ryan Miller, Pekka Rene, and Mike Smith. The big names there. 
For retired skaters, we have Zetterberg. Sharp Zetterberg finished his career on Nashville. Uh, Justin Williams and a couple of other pretty big names. Mark Giordano also retires. That is a rough way to go out. Losing in the cup final and you were also somewhat injured at the time. A couple of other names there on the list. You guys get the picture. Let's clear up the trading block and then move into the draft. As far as any moves we might make, I'd I'd like to think that we have the cap space to sign whoever we need to sign, which again, I'm not even really that sure of who we need to resign. I should probably take a look before we go into the draft just to make sure that we don't need anybody. And that is exactly what we'll do. That we don't have, you know, someone that's going to need like $8 million coming up and then we can't afford them. Despite some players underperforming in this offseason, I would for the most part like to keep this team together. We have $6.6 .6 million in cap space. And as far as expiring deals, we do have quite a few. Jeff Skinner is one of them. Nolachari is one of them. Zarnik, this could actually be this could actually be a little bit rough it really could be if we look at what people are getting paid in the next year Kyle Turris man maybe I mean would it be worth getting rid of Kyle Turris 56 points in the regular season only 11 points in the postseason I think between Bergeron Krejci and Turris somebody has to go and it might be Kyle Turris those are the big contracts on our team. And it might just be him. We will actually take a look to see what his value is because I'd actually kind of like to hold on to Krejci. Like, the obvious choice would be, you know, Krejci or Bergeron. But, I don't know. It kind of makes sense. So the Florida Panthers have the number one overall pick. Excuse me. What is the value of one Kyle Turris who we got for free? So Pasternak, Skinner, Turris, man, we might, we might be able to do something good here with Kyle Turris. Now he has a little bit more value than Krejci or Bergeron. We might be able to do something here with Kyle Turris. Because we can't, if it was up to me, we'd trade Jeff Skinner. We do have our first round pick this year. We actually have quite a few picks this year. I didn't even realize. Do we? Yeah, I think we do. I think we do. Do we we go for that number one overall pick? I want to see who's on the board really quickly. Uh, draft summary, I believe. Nope, that's not it. Nope, it would be uh, scouted players. Duh. Wow. Who is inside the top five? We have uh, Sergey Artukin, a sniper. We have Joel Lampkin, a Canadian defenseman. A center, Johan Gustafsson, uh, Igor Batsayev, and Duke Platt. Yeah, he's Austrian, all right. See, that's the thing that's risky, is who could we possibly... Because I don't want to go out and get a great defenseman right now because we don't know what Chalowski and McAvoy are going to do. And offensively, we're pretty much good. It would just be, you know, trade tourists to make sure we can get a decent prospect in return and to have cap space to sign Jeff Skinner. I mean, if we were to go, like, getting Lampkin, like, it would just be a complete crapshoot as to who we'd actually get, and there's no guarantee that they'll be decent. So we are in a pretty rough spot, but I feel like we have to trade somebody. We have to get rid of some cap space, because otherwise I don't know if we'll be able to afford everybody. So do I just take... <sighs> All right, you know what? We're not going to do anything. We're going to stay. We are going to stay. Now, I am going to be a tiny bit cheap here because we have just a ton of fourth-round picks. I am going to try to trade for another third rounder. We'll try to get Phillies. So we'll try to trade up just a little bit here so we don't have a ton of picks. But I think for now, we will just hold on. We will wait it out. And we will see who uh, who we can keep moving forward. Now, it might be pretty difficult here to get this third round pick, actually. But, God, that's a lot of fourths. 
Can we pull this off is the question. At this point, they're almost robbing us blind. So if they don't accept this, then screw it. We'll just keep the forts and we'll make this trade. Yep, okay, fuck Philly. Well, let's just move forward. We will make all of these picks. Screw it. So sim to user pick. Obviously, we will have the 30th overall pick. But that is all right by me. Because at the end of the day, we are Stanley Cup champions. And that is all that matters. Now, this draft looks to have... Oh, my God. All right. Well, there you go. We have our answer. We should have traded up. We couldn't have gone wrong. Gustafson, Lampkin, but Saev. God damn it. Well, if we went with Platt or Artukin. But uh, Varakas, a defenseman elite. Rakunic elite. Corvo elite. Bell elite. Langdon elite. This is the most ridiculous draft I think I've ever seen. Top sixes everywhere. Holy shit. Uh... So, Colorado, about that defenseman you just drafted, <laughs> is it too late to make a deal to get him? Like, what is his value going to be? What is his value going to be? Let's take a look here. Whew. 69 overall at 19 years old. And that's the thing. We're going to get him. We're going to get him. That's the thing. I'd love to go after uh, whoever the hell Florida and... Philly just drafted, but there's there's just no way. I don't, I don't want to trade within the division or within the conference. So we will look to send Kyle Turris to the Colorado Avalanche. We will take back Tyler Watherspoon and then just cut him. Will that go through clean? It will not. Worth a shot. Let's see here. What else do we have to do? Because we are going to make this work. We'll probably have to give up our first. But maybe not. How about just a third? Terrace and a third for Lampkin and Watherspoon? No. We'll try a second. Because we have a second to spare. Edmonton. Terrace and a second for Lampkin. That didn't go through either. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. Alright, well. How about that? That went through. And you know what, guys? I'm okay with it. I am... Kyle Turris, he didn't overly impress me. We just cut a lot of cap space, which is good. And in return, we get a truly elite defensive prospect. Yes, we miss out as well on a second and a third round pick. But I'm all right with that. Like I said, you know, you move Turris, you move some picks. We essentially just got the number two overall pick. And we still have a first round pick of our own. We have Cali Sojagrin. Sojagrin. Someone who was, I know I have people from Sweden who watch my stuff, which is crazy, by the way. Thank you. You'll tell me what's up. So look, it's looking like it's going to be Vincent St. Jacques or Shogrin. Is that, the S can't be silent. Jogrin? Maybe? You know what? I'm going to take him so that you guys can tell me for sure. We are taking the Swede with the 30th overall pick after trading for Lampkin. Again, I would have loved to have had one of the forwards, but it just made more sense. And he is medium top six. That is not too bad at all for a 30th overall pick. So let's move forward. We have a ton of picks to still get through here. A ton. So let's see here. A bunch of top four. St. Jacques was low top six. So we made a pretty good choice. A pretty good choice. Well, let's see here. Second round. I'm actually just going to go by this. High fringe starter. They're both in the fourth round. Uh, high bottom six, high seven. Nothing really ideal. Okay, so maybe we'll sort back here. Exact starter. Exact starter for Evan Sawchuk. And then we have two grinders, a sniper, Brock McLaren, and a playmaker, and Boris Kozlov. The goalie's there for a reason, right? We're taking Sawchuk. How good is he going to be? Medium starter. See, we have learned our lesson. If there is a goalie somewhat high up in the rankings and the projections, he is worth taking. Now, we jump to the third. We don't need to go ahead and look back. Although, I suppose I could jump back to the second to see who we passed up on. And right here, it's looking... Like it's going to be Shannon Sylvester. Yeah, I, I can imagine a Shannon Sylvester from Denmark. Yeah, totally. Uh, who else do we have here? These two defensemen. George Bourgeois? Fuck, man, French. 
It's awful. Or Edwin Lindros. Only because your name is Edwin, you can go fuck... If there's any Edwins out there, I don't... It's not you. It's not you. Don't worry. We have two goalies here as well. Cole Dowell and Terrence Thornton. So who the hell do we go with here? We could go with Raymond Guerra. We could go with Jacques Desrochers. We could go with Clifford Girard. Or Arthur Lowe. Exact top six. I haven't taken a risk on an exact top or an exact potential player in a while. I'm going to do it. Low. Please be good. Low top six. Hey, you know what? You know what? It worked out. Low top six in the third round. I'm good with that. Gerard was medium top nine. Sylvester. Uh, Hoodloo, medium starter. Not too bad. You know, overall, not a bad pick, especially considering how that all panned out. I think we made the right choice, so I'm glad that worked out for us. What else do we have here? Probably DeRocher. Probably Jacques DeRocher from Shawinigan. A young man from Shawinigan. He ends up being medium top nine. That's not too bad. Now, we still have a ton of picks. That's why I'm going to try to breeze through the rest of this, because again... Try to keep these episodes somewhat shorter, more approachable. We have... Why? I'm calling him Sylvan. <laughs> we also have Mark Jacques uh, Smoskowitz. Hell of a name there. Or we could go with the goalie. High fringe starter Terrence Thornton. Right. Is there anybody else still projected in the fourth round? That we could go for Edwin Bickle. What's up with the Edwins? And Cole Dowell. I am going to go with Cole Dowell. I'm taking a risk, and we're going to go with Cole Dowell. Low starter. That's not awful. Whatever Thornton ends up being, though, could make me regret it. Was he picked? Jacques is medium. Thornton was low starter. Okay. Well, we, we couldn't have gone wrong there, could we? So not too bad. I knew I wanted one of those two goalies. Glad we got who we got. So, Bellefui... Belafay uh, Smoskowitz. No. Um, who else do we have here that we actually have scouted? Exact seventh. I don't want to take a risk on that. Let me sort by potential again. And we have uh, Martin Grumet Morris, or Grumet Morris, who is projected to go fifth, sixth. Or we can go with this. This is pretty much like the last solid defensive prospect. We'll go with him. Tell me down below how to pronounce his name. For now, he's Sylvan, and he's not that great, so he might not be Sylvan for much longer. He might be Sylgon. Boom! Proud of myself for that one. <laughs> Jeez. Can you tell it's late when I'm recording this? Why do you guys watch me? If that doesn't make you second-guess the fact that you're subscribed to me, you're messed up in the head, and I like you for that. God damn it. Um, so, so as far as who we can take here, it's not looking too good. Any exacts left? Uh, exact top six might be worth a shout. Sven Johansson. You know what? Let's, uh, well, well, also Mark Talbot. Fifth, sixth, we're still in the fourth. Let's, uh, well, you know, what do we have here? Keith Fowler, yeah, he's totally Norwegian. Martin Grumman Morris and Nico Twomanen. Right. Let's go only because he has ex or a high league interest. Grumman Morris, please be decent. Low top nine, that's not awful for the fourth round. I think we still have plenty of picks to go in the fourth round, and indeed we do. So really, why these picks are a struggle for me, I have no idea, because we're pretty much getting all of these players anyway. So we will go with exact top six. Sven Johansson is low top six, you know? It technically wasn't a lie. Talbot was medium seventh. Not too bad there at all. Who else can we get here? I just traded Kyle Turris <laughs> a year after signing him and getting him in cup, and we got an elite defenseman. Am I going to regret that? Who knows? Uh, let's take the Finn, Twomanen. He's up next, and we got to scroll all the way back to see 
how good he is. Low top nine, again, not terrible, given the fact that he was the last pick of the fourth round. We're in the fifth round, though. We're going to keep on going here. We're going to keep on going and see who we can get, and we will take Fowler. Totally Norwegian, and not a bad pick. Low top nine. Pretty good draft here. Now, we've obviously would have made more than 12 picks at this point, which is kind of the guideline, but now nah, whatever. Who cares? It's it's arbitrary. You know, you could just, I could trade down a couple of times or whatever. Who the hell cares? Now, we have Christian Huntley. You know what, Christian? Today is your lucky day. Please at least be AHL top. Low AHL top two. Okay, you know what? Might have been your lucky day. It wasn't mine. Because I regret that pick. I do. I really do. Really, really do. Last pick of the sixth round. Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? I really don't think it matters at this point. <laughs> I really don't. It's not looking too good. Nobody has any league interest whatsoever. So you know what? I said it was kind of meh, you know, kind of pointless to trade down. We're actually going to trade down to next year. These picks aren't worth making. So let's just move on. I can't believe we have Lampkin. Not too bad. How about since Colorado was pretty shit, they'll be better this year, though. Let's, uh, hmm. How about your sixth next year? For our sixth and a seventh this year. Thank you very much. We are done with this draft. What ended up being... A pretty damn eventful draft, actually, is, again, we traded Kyle Turris, got what was uh, the number two overall pick at the time. We actually ended up with only 11 draft picks, so that is not too shabby, and we get to look forward to the next episode where we, again, have to make some moves, potentially. Jeff Skinner, who knows what some of the progression will be like, the free agency situation, should we have traded Kyle Turris? No, we probably should have sent Krejci, but it is what it is. So let's see here. Uh, that would be unsigned players we are looking for. So goalies, it's looking pretty good. Stuart Skinner will be in Providence this year, but we have Sawchuk, medium starter at 69 overall, and Dowell, low starter at a 65. Defensively, Sylvan is a 71. Not too bad. Lampkin is a 69. Johansson is a 63, and Huntley is a 61. That's not looking too good at all. Jogren is a 67. Twoman in a 66, low a 61. That is a low overall, am I right? I'm sorry. Uh, DeRoche is a 67. Grume Morris a 63. And that is about it, aside from Valor, who was also a 63. So we get some decent prospects, which is good, because the situation in Providence was obviously pretty good. This past year, as we won the Calder Cup. I'm going to say that as many times as I can. That'll do it for this one, guys. Of course, if you did enjoy, make sure to hit that like button to help support me and my channel. It is greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't already to continue following this series and others. And I will see you guys in the next one where we find out what the defending champion Bruins will look like as we head in to Season 4.